Well, good to see you again. Hope you're enjoying our Lent devotionals. We're sure enjoying putting those together for you. Today's devotional I've entitled Time. And I want to read for us from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. The writer offers, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Time. Time is one of those things that we never seem to have enough of and we never seem to pay attention to. We're not always intentional about our time. Most of us live lives short of time in a hurried and harried world. We have this thing maybe we could call hurry sickness, rushing from one place to the other, never having enough time. The writer of Ecclesiastes reminds us that there's a value in time. In fact, many of us have time as our highest value. I was thinking about taking some of my vacation that I'm kind of coming up against the, the barrier to in terms of how many days I can keep. And I thought, you know, it's, this time is more precious to me than the money that I would be paid for that time. So the reminder here from Ecclesiastes to be mindful of time and its particular purposes is really important. Time to be born and a time to die and that short period in between. The time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to be silent and a time to speak and the list goes on. No matter what we do, we ought to be mindful of our time. This precious limited commodity commodity that God gives us. There's a story about NFL quarterback Kirk Cousins who has a sculpture outside his house with a kind of an odd purpose. It's intended to remind him that he's going to die. Well, sort of. You see, Kirk Cousins is planning to live around 90 years old and the quarterback is placed outside his front door, a jar of 720 stones, one stone for each month he intends to live between now and the age 90. Each month he takes out of the jar one of the stones and he carries it with him for that month. He told ESPN that, quote, every month he's going to take out a stone, put it in his pocket and think, once this month is over, this is gone. You can never get it back. It's gone for good. The story is only a little morbid, that is, until you remember, as Cousins takes out the stones, he has a visual reminder right there in front of his house, in front of his front door, no less, this visual reminder that his time on earth is getting shorter and shorter. That may sound morbid at first, but it's also biblical. Kurt Cousins says that he actually came to this understanding from Scripture. And his jar out front of his house with these little stones was placed there as a response to Psalm 90 and verse 12, where the psalmist writes, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. According to this verse, Cousins says, quote, about the importance of leaving a mark and making a deposit in people's lives in a way that matters. This is why he has the jar. He continues, in other words, 
you have an understanding that the life that you're living now is coming to an end someday and that we only have so many days. Cousins concludes by saying, there's wisdom in that. Isn't it true? There's wisdom to know that our days are numbered, that we only have so many months, so many stones, so many rocks to put in our pocket. At the end of each month, at the end of each year, those are gone, never to see again, never to get back. I want to encourage you as you continue your Lent devotions, as you continue your contemplation and meditation and focus on God, think about how you use your time. Are you using it deliberately for his purposes? Is there intentionality behind the way you use your time? Or do you just slip into the patterns of everyday life, the hurry and the hustle and bustle? Because if you do, you're missing out. There's wisdom in slowing. There's wisdom in taking time for yourself, for others, and most importantly, for God. Let's pray. So, Father, we are grateful that you are the creator of time, and you hold time in your hands. May we be deliberate and intentional in the use of our time, our limited time, this greatest, perhaps, resource that is so infinitely limited. May we give to you our time that you would be glorified, that we would find you in it, that we would love you and others. So our time, God, is yours. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. <music>